My name is Daniel K. Daniel. Daniel. Kanayo Daniel. <laughs> a lot of people don't know that, but yeah. <laughs> uh, and I play the character Namdi Wokeji. My first reaction when I read the script. Listen, there's for, I think, probably 90% of all professional actors, the script is everything. The script is the driving force. The no money is good, don't get me wrong. But the script is, I think that's the be all and end all. That's what tells you, I want to be part of this. Or, eh, you know, I'm sitting on the fence or something like that. For me, the script was awesome. Not because I'm in this show, not because I'm on this uh, TV show, but because I think it is, because that is the main reason I'm here today. I love the script. Uh, <clears throat> didn't stop reading it when I started reading it. Good thing is I'm a fast reader, so I just skim treat another. You know, it's a page turner. It's something you want to get to the end of. And I feel like that's what the audience are going to also feel when they're, you know, watching it. It's like, I want more. I want more. I want to see what happens next. I want to see what happens next. You know, so it's like, uh, and it has so many facets to it. So that's what's also fascinating about it. It's, you can't just say this is one straight genre. This is like a lot of genres mixed up in one. So you can call it a crime thriller. There's, you know, there's a lot of romance in it as well. So you can call it a romantic crime thriller. That's, you see where I'm going with this? So there's a lot of, and then there's some action. There's a lot of action as well, actually. You know, car chases and, you know, stuff like that. So it's very, very interesting. He's very cunning, very cunning. There are too many words to describe him. I'm trying to narrow it down to the top three. I think that's the problem I'm having in my head because this man is boisterous. This man is the life of the party. He's cunning, he's sly, he's, he's smart. He thinks he's smart. He thinks he's smart, but yeah, he's smart. So pick any top three you want from those ones. <laughs> it was fascinating thinking about my character. He's very manipulative, so I think in a, in, all, in, all of, in a lot of scenes, you see him try to take control of everything and everyone. And I, I, that was very interesting for me. And also the fact that he has a lucky charm. I think those are the two most, uh, tra tra uh, two most fascinating things for me about Lemmy Wokeji is the fact that he's very manipulative. So no matter what it seems like in every scene, he's always trying to be in control of everything and everyone and every situation, no matter how bad it looks. And also the fact that he has a lucky charm. I won't tell you what his lucky charm is. When you watch this series, you know what his lucky charm is. He has a lucky charm that he doesn't let go of. Yeah, but what should viewers expect from DJ in the series? Well, I already told you the script is explosive. So you take that because this, the script is the first ingredient. So the next ingredient will be the directors or the director. In this case, we had four. So we have four directors on this, and then you take the actors, those very, very nice, you know, talented actors to throw it into the mix. So we had four directors on set. Uh, James Omokwe, uh, who's also the executive producer, directed some, some episodes. Uh, Fini Gambo, I think we started with him, he directed some episodes as well. Uh, Ifoma Chukuru and um, Tolu Ajayi were the other three directors in the series. So you take these four amazing directors and the actors that we have, or we had on this uh, series and put it together and we, it, it will make for an explosive film. Uh, I can't even wait to watch it myself. I know I'm in it, I know I know the story, but I really want to see what it looks like, you know, because this, this is the finished product we're talking about with sound, with the edits, you know, so I can't wait to see it. And I think that's the same attitude everyone should have. DJ is going to be, in fact, in layman's time, it's going to be mad. <laughs> it's going to be mad, you know, so viewers should expect a very, um, like I said, it's not just one genre, a very explosive, beautiful, romantic crime thriller. You know, there's a lot going on here, so prepare yourself for it. <laughs> it's a lot going on. Mmm. <laughs> Uzawaka and you know loves watching series on her phone. Like she can't get her face off her phone. Like so, I'm like, what are you like? She's always like this. So she binge watching series all through on the phone. I know Uzawaka on her also. Well, that one is this one is not a secret. I used to tell her she's a tomboy. She's just a tomboy. So when she's not being the fine on-screen DJ, she's just a a refined thought. <laughs> She's gonna get me for this one. <laughs> she just, you know, they refine out. <laughs> she wear her baggies, she put her hand in her pockets, and she like, you know, I'm like, behave yourself. What's wrong with you? Don't be 
try and act attractive for once. Uh, Efa is my guy, so I mean, we, we played a lot of games together. He 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 likes to think he's good at FIFA, but I taught him I taught him a few lessons, you know, taught him a few lessons. I humbled him. Um, Kalu, ah, no, 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 no. Kalu is a problem. Kalu is a problem. Kalu, you see, Kalu thinking he's a, he's a serious guy. No, that that one is not a serious guy. That one. <laughs> Uh, in Igbo, they say lots of that and you see somewhere. <laughs> Let him not catch me. But yeah, it means it means he's crazy. <laughs> Simply put, it means he's crazy. Uh, who else do I have juice on? Moby Chinger, Wilfred. Mm. TikTok ambassador. <laughs> TikTok ambassador. Listen, yeah, that's that's what that's that's what she does in her downtime. She's like, she's like, if you're not on this TikTok thing, you're missing out. So she even got me to, you know. Get more serious in my TikTok, which I just opened, you know, a few days ago. Mojira was a, she was a TikTok inspiration for me. I said, if mommy that is serious with her TikTok, what's more me? And I this, and I'm here for me that I don't want to do TikTok. So, I mean, it was a fun set. Everyone was chill. Like, you know, when you spend a lot of time with people, they drop their guards. It's normal. You know, the first day, everybody can walk in all high and mighty. You know, DK, you know, me, Seth, I walk in, like, you know. But after a few days, you, everybody, well, like, you know, you, it's one family, so everything, all the secrets come out. But I'm not going to spill the rest. Thank you very much, please. I'm not going to the police station because of you. <laughs> I love the, I mean, it was a top-notch production. Let's get that out, Claire. You know, top-notch African crew and cast. Everyone right from the very top, the executive producer, to every single person, the PA, my PA, everyone was awesome and professional. But I feel like for me, what stood out was the professionalism and the, when I say togetherness, it was more like a family, you know. It, it tends to happen sometimes, you know, when you film together for a long time, it, you know, you tend to go from being just strangers to being family, you know, so you spend two days, three days, four days, before you know it, three weeks, four, five weeks with someone, you guys have passed that, uh, you know, level. So it was more like a family trying to, a village, a family trying to create something that we believe, we all believed in. So, um, I mean, that that kind of stood out for me. It was, it was, it was a, a great experience. We can say I took a break from Nigeria. Yes, I did take a break from Nigerian films. Uh, um, I still did a few things while I was out of the country, but it it feels good to be back. Um, I never had any doubt that I'm back. <laughs> so uh, it was it was I would say it was interesting at first because I had to get used to a lot of things that I kind of unlearned. So I had to relearn some Nigerian work ethics and you know things that a bit different here. But it was it was uh, a great start. Um, DJ was a great experience, and I, I can I can tell you uh, can tell you enough about that. It was a great experience. What type of stories does Nollywood need to tell? Nollywood, I mean, I don't think we're doing bad on stories. We tell a lot of great stories right from the inception, you know, of Nollywood. I, I know I didn't watch a lot of Nollywood when I was young because I was a, a chicken, I was a scaredy cat. The era, the era of blood money, the era of people turning to to yam when they touch money on the ground, <laughs> you know. So the, yeah, so all those living in bondage, old school blood money movies, they dealt with me. They made me made me a chicken. So my mom stopped me from watching Nigerian movies when I was young. So we, we've come a long way from that, to be honest. We went through a phase, I know, with the funny movies, the comedy, Mr. Ibu, Aki and Popo, we loved them. They thrilled everybody, you know, and then we went into the romantic phase, you know. So now Nollywood has come in leaps and bounds, and I feel like there's nothing we can not do. Uh, when you say stories to begin to tell, we tell our stories. I mean, um, 76 told the story of the 1976 coup, October 1 told, you know, so I feel like there's we're touching every every nook and cranny. I just think that directors and producers should tell whatever story that they're comfortable with. I had this conversation with someone, you know, a few days ago when they say, uh, hey, someone should come and tell the story of how Nigerians have been um, disrespected in Dubai. I said, you can't force someone to tell a story. People tell stories that they believe in. You see Kemi Aditiba, she told the story she believes in. Everyone tells the story that they believe in. That's the thing with directors. You can't force it on them. They will tell you, and the, the, when they believe in it, they, make, they do a better job of it. The job of the director is to convince the actors that this story needs to be told, and it can be told. So the, the actor's job is to bring the director's idea to life. So it's the director's thing. That's when you see a movie, you see a, 
so so and so person film. That is that person's thing, that's person's idea. So it goes without saying, you can see where we're doing great. Well, show Max on the six. Who knows what next? <laughs> so yeah. I can answer some part of that, and I won't answer the other part until we get to see the show. You know, I know the script is awesome. I know the characters, the actors are great. I know the directors. So uh, we need to see the finished product. Um, it will set the tone in the fact that I, I, I don't think they could have picked a better production for it to be the flagship, to be the first original. I'm proud to be, you know, a part of a part of this. Um, when it premieres and people will see that they made the right decision to pick this at the flagship. So it will set the tone because in terms of production quality, I've seen the trailer, it's beautiful, it's awesome. Yeah, uh, and some of the clips. So it will set the tone and it will set the bar really high because then people, no one can go lower than that. You know, you know what, they, they'll be making references. You, I mean, you saw DJ, so you know what you need to do. <laughs> so that's, 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 that's a good thing for us.